a syntax tree. Well, actually, two syntax trees. A student asked for a solution to a sentence and sent in the sentence on the right, number two. And I went about analysing that and it was ready. And quite soon after, he said, oh, he'd forgotten a word and he sent me number one. So I figured instead of redoing it, I would just do another one because this is an example of how a preposition in this case, how it can alter how the sentence is analysed because it changes the nature of the sentence in itself. So we'll look at this now. Um, sentence one is the correct version um, in the sense that it makes meaning. The second one is grammatically correct, but meaning-wise it's just a little bit strange. In the 16th century of Japan, one of the greatest powers was the Monto sect of Buddhists. I mean, what does that actually mean? Sometimes something can be grammatically correct, but meaningfully strange. For example, furious green chairs sleep quietly. That sounds grammatically okay, but meaning-wise it's a little bit strange, and that's what this is a little bit like. Let's go ahead and open this up. There's a subj and a pred, and the pred is up, up to where the, um, the finite verb is. And why I have the subj is because there's both an adverbial and a subject. I don't want to call all of this the subject. This is why I have this pedagogical poor hit, as I, as I call it. And there's an adverbial, which is a prepositional phrase in the 16th century, and a subject, which is, which is Japan, one of the greatest powers, and that's a noun phrase. And in the, in the predicate, all of this here, you have a predicator, was, and that's a verb phrase. And you have the Monto Sacred Buddhists, and that's a noun phrase. So this is the way this is made up. Now let's go and compare on the left-hand side. And this is where I received the information about in Japan a little bit later on. This one makes more meaningful sense. And, but how is this then? Because of the, the, the in there, well, if you break that up, there's a predicate, and in the predicate, it's at here, was, and this is the linking verb here. So this part here, that's the same as the one on the right. However, when we open up the subj, what's, what does that consist of? Well, there's a subject, and that's one of the greatest powers, and in Japan is an adverbial, and in the 16th century is an adverbial. This tells you when, this tells you where, and then one of the greatest powers was the Monte Sector Buddhists. So this reflects back, the predicator, the predicative subject reflects back on the subject here. And how does the subject realize? This realizes a noun phrase, and the adverbial here is a prepositional phrase, and this is also a prepositional phrase. So you notice this here has a dramatic influence, but also so does the subject. The subject in, in this one is, it's a numeral one, and it's a prepositional phrase of the greatest powers. So this is a subject here when you open this up. That's what the subject looks like there. The subject in number two, on the other hand, is simply Japan, one of the greatest powers. So this opens up and you can see it's a little bit different as it comes up. So it was because of the word in was missing. And when I read this the first time, I, I had to make sense out of what I received. And so I put it together a bit like this. So in, in essence, it's quite good to see, uh, uh, as a grammatical exercise, to see the difference in the two. Now, the, predic uh, the predicate in both is exactly the same. It pans out exactly the same way. There's no difference. Because they're both predicative subjects. Because of the, of the linking verb was. Okay? So... If we now look on the left-hand side, it's the adverbials which, which differ here. So let's just look at in the subj and how the adverbials behave. All right? So we're looking at in the subj, how the adverbials behave. 
and we'll just close the subject away for a moment here and then this one here is is an adverbial realizes a prepositional phrase and this is in the 16th century and here we have and then we have in Japan but here we have only in the 16th century only only in the 16th century and then you have the subject the way it's made up and this is Japan and this is a noun phrase in opposition opposition you don't really need to know this term this is just the noun phrase the noun the head of the noun but in, in another way of putting it another way of saying it but here because of the word of the preposition in this became an adverbial it was no longer a part of the subject so now we're going to compare um, the two of these together and you can see how they pan out differently in the end because of the, of the fact that the preposition changed the nature of how the subject was put together. And let me just say one last thing here. The important part here was that we do the analysis one at a time and it was in the clausal elements here you see these clausal elements, they differ because of the way, the, the, the influence of the word in. And hence the syntax tree um, differed in the way it played out later on.